Topic three, temporary and permanent differences in a loss year. In general, the way to think about this, this interesting thing, are tax losses and the carrybacks or carry forwards. What are we doing here? What are we really concerned about? And something arises when taking a look at the difference between temporary and permanent differences. What will occur when looking at lost carry forwards? This introduces deferred income tax. Deferred income taxes comes when we need to account for the difference between tax and accounting net income. Again, let me just repeat that because it is so central. Please pause and write this down. Deferred income taxes is the accounting for the difference between tax and accounting net income. Permanent differences do not create deferred income tax because they are permanent differences. They are differences that are going to be the different, um, different treatments under tax and under accounting, but they're permanent. So they do not result in a timing difference. This will become important later. So items such as meals and entertainment for accounting net income, you can deduct 100% of meals and entertainment if they have to do with earning money for your company. How, un, however, under the tax, because tax is law, um, only 50% of meals and entertainment are deductible. In general, there's a few exceptions, but in general, only 50% deductible. So those are permanent differences. Nothing will, um, will reverse out in the future. Another example of a permanent difference is accounting, or pardon me, is golf fees or dues for accounting, absolutely deductible if they're an expense that is used to generate the company some business. But under tax, the law, the law says golf dues are and golf fees are not deductible. None of them are. Not at 50%, not at 75%, at 0%. So what is going to result in deferred income taxes is when there are temporary differences that arise. Temporary differences means that there are differences between the tax and accounting rules, but that they will reverse out and that whether or not uh, there is a... Um, whether or not there is a, if there is more or less taxable income versus accounting income, really just depends on the year that you have. But all in all, you'll add up everything and they'll be the same. So it's accounting for the timing difference between tax and accounting net income. An example of this timing or temporary difference would be CCA and depreciation. So under both tax and accounting, we purchased fixed assets and we capitalized them. And then under accounting, we depreciated over its useful life. Under tax, we depreciate it or amortize it according to the tax law, the CCA rate. Sure, sometimes the tax law gets it right and they reflect the economic reality of how much of this asset we're going to use over time. But Usually they don't, and that creates a temporary difference. Are you in actuality actuality going to use more or less of this asset depending on if you're looking at it for tax purposes or accounting purposes? No. And when you sell them, you're going to get rid of them at the same time. So it really just is a temporary difference that has to do with timing and that creates a deferred income tax asset or a, de a deferred income tax liability that we need to reflect the accounting for the difference between this tax and accounting difference. Let's look at a step-by-step -step approach. So let's first calculate our taxable income or loss. Let's look at JBC Corporate's ten, uh, Corporation's year-end for December 31st, 2018. They have a net income for $30,000 pre tax, $52,000 of depreciation expense was charged throughout the year. There was CCA totaling $100,000.
there is a net book value of property, plants, and equipment of 425,000 with a UCC of 375,000 for the same account on January 1st, 2018, a temporary difference of 50,000, which results in a deferred income tax liability of 15,000 on January 1st, 2018. In addition, there are also non-deductible penalties of 7,000 were expensed in the period for a late payment on tax. The tax rate for JVC is 30% in 2018, as well as all previous years. The company has losses in the past three years, totaling $90,000. All right, step-by-step -step approach. Looking at the net income for JVC, you wanna start, you always start with accounting net income. And then you want to adjust for any permanent differences. So for accounting net income, we were able to deduct the, um, the tax penalty, but that is not deductible for, uh, for tax purposes. So you can't incur a tax penalty and then also get to deduct it. So we need to add that back. So we have an accounting net income of 30,000. We get to add back 7,000 in non-deductible penalties. So right now we have a taxable net income, so a net income that we're paying taxes on of 37,000. Now let's go on to our temporary differences. Under our tax law, we don't get to uh, we don't get to deduct our depreciation because that's an accounting deduction. So we need to add it back. So we add back our 52,000 for depreciation. And then we minus our CCA, which we are allowed to minus, we are allowed to deduct for tax purposes. So we sum all of this up and we come to a taxable income or loss, we actually get a loss, a tax loss of $11,000. So we have positive accounting net income and we have a loss for tax purposes. So now we get to realize what the heck is going on with step two? What do we do with our tax loss? As well as what do we do with our temporary differences? So recall back to our example, the only temporary difference is in PP&E, where we had a, a different rate for a tax deduction versus our accounting deduction, our accounting depreciation. Now, if you recall, we did have, and I'll just flip back to it now, we did have a loss for, uh, for tax purposes of 11000 For step two, I'm going to hold off on that. So I'm going to put that on the shelf and we can take a look at that in just a moment. For now, I want to take a look at the difference caused between the year-end tax basis, so the year-end UCC of our our pp &E for tax purposes. So our 375 opening minus our CCA of 100,000 gets us our closing pp &E balance for tax purposes of 275,000, as well as our ending accounting net book value. This creates a temporary difference of $98,000. What does that 98,000 difference mean? Well, it means that our accounting income pardon me, our accounting uh, net book value is greater than our tax balance. So this represents all $275,000 worth of future tax deductions. So what that means is we have a lower tax base for an asset than we do for our um, accounting. So that means there's gonna be less of a tax deduction in future years. So what does that actually mean? It means that you have a liability. So you have the difference between accounting and tax. In this year, the accounting for that is a liability because it represents a past, present, future. It represents a present obligation that you can't get out of, you can't magically change these, that represents um, the result of a past transaction, absolutely the taxable difference, uh, the difference between accounting and tax income that will result in the future economic flow of resources. Yep, they're going to have to pay more taxes in the future. So the difference between these two is 98000 
We take that, times it by 30,000, and that gets us our deferred income tax liability. It's a liability because our tax basis for the asset is lower than our accounting, so less of a deduction in the future, of 29,400. In our previous slide, we were told that the, the beginning balance of a deferred tax liability, a DITL, DTL, of 15,000. So therefore, because this is a liability account, it means it's cumulative. So how do we go from an opening balance of a liability of 15,000 to 29,400? That's right. We have to increase it by 14,400. And to increase the liability, that is a credit of 14,400. Let's take a look at the journal entry and we'll incorporate our tax loss for the year as well. In step three, we must prepare a journal entry. This requires us to reflect the actual tax loss for the present year, as well as the effects of the deferred income tax. All right, so the two together, the deferred income tax, as well as the tax expense or recovery, that represents our current year's um, tax impact to our income statement. Let's first look at the income tax receivable. If you recall, we had a taxable loss for the period of 11,000. I'll just scroll back to show you. So we had a taxable loss for the period of 11,000. So we can carry it back for 30%. So 30% of that 11,000 is going to be a debit, a receivable, a refund from the government for $3,300. Then in the previous slide, we said that we needed to increase our diddle, increase our deferred income tax liability by 14,400. The net of the current income tax receivable and the deferred amount um, going to our income tax expense is the, going to be net. So net of 11,100. You could absolutely do this in two separate journal entries where you would have a debit to um, income tax expense for 14,400 and a credit to income tax recovery of $3,300. The net effect is 11,100. So whether you do it gross uh, in two entries or net in one entry is absolutely up to you. We get to the same impact to the financial statements and, and just just kind of we get to the same end result. So don't don't worry too much about the minutia. Look at what the heck are we doing here? What does this represent? Well, for IFRS purposes, we always have two pieces to our income tax expense. That's our current income tax and our deferred income tax. What is deferred income tax? It is the accounting for the difference, the timing difference between accounting and taxable income. Let's take a look at a question. Bob and Corp is an arcade machine manufacturer. They have recorded a taxable loss of $3,000 in the current year. At your end, there was one temporary difference related to CCA that gave rise to a deferred tax liability of 26,000 at the year end rate. The beginning balance of this deferred tax liability was 20,000. The tax rate is 35%. The company has had income totaling up to $12,000 in the past three years. The tax rate has always been 35%. What amount will be entered to the income tax expense account? Will it be A, a debit of 4,950, B, a credit of 4,950. C, a debit of 2,100. Or D, a credit of 2,100. The answer is A, 4, 000, a debit of 4,950. So if you recall, first we want to look at, well, we do want to look at both of our current and deferred income tax numbers separately. So let's look first at our deferred income tax. We see that the one temporary difference gave us what we need to have was a diddle at the end of the year of 26,000. And we presently have a diddle of 20,000. 
So in order to go from 20,000 to 26,000, we need to increase it. So increase that liability by 6,000. So credit to the diddle account. Okay, and then we have a tax loss in the current year of 3,000. Well, we have a history of income in the past three years, far in excess of that 3,000. So we can carry back this entire 3,000 to um, and apply it to each one of our three years. We'll just go as far back as possible. And that's 3,000 times by the tax rate that's always been in effect, which is 3,500. Pardon me, is 35%. 3,000 times 35% equals 1,050. And then the, um, so we would have had an income tax of recovery of 1,050. We would have had an income tax expense of 6,000. We net them out at a debit of an income tax expense of 4,950 in a debit position. And that's how we get our answer. That is why A is correct. This is a tricky topic. Uh, I suggest re-watching this video a few times, not necessarily right now, but come back to it. It gets easier with a little bit of recognition, learning, repeated exposure, same or similar topics. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video.